Hi guys, we are talking in this video about siRNA or gene silencing. Um, it is a mechanism that is likely to exist in organisms anyway, but scientists, again, just like um, just like PCR and uh, just like sequencing, just like those techniques can, are, are using processes that happen anyway, gene silencing is another one that scientists can use to manipulate gene expression um, to kind of... Okay, so what are we talking about anyway? So we're talking here about gene silencing and what that means is how do we it's, it's a way that gene expression can be uh, negatively regulated. So we have, we have uh, positive gene regulation. So for example, you get a transcription factor. So let, let's, just, let's just remind ourselves what gene expression involves in the first place. So we have the nucleus, okay, with the nuclear pores and we have DNA in the nucleus. Uh, RNA polymerase will transcribe a certain gene from this thing. Okay, so we'll have RNA polymerase involved here. So the gene unwinds. Gene unwinds. Just going through over this very quickly, just so, so that you can remind yourself of the process that is going to be affected by the siRNA. So we have the gene unwinding; it's transcribed by RNA polymerase to produce the mRNA. The mRNA then exits the nucleus via the nuclear pore into the cytoplasm. The rough ER it encounters a ribosome. The ribosome then reads the codons on the mRNA um, using the codons together with the transfer RNAs to join up amino acids to produce protein. Okay. So as the ribosome reads the mRNA, it's joining amino acids up and producing a polypeptide chain. That polypeptide chain is then going to fold up into secondary and tertiary structure to make us a protein that has a particular function. So functional functional protein. Okay? So this is essentially gene expression. It's the central dogma of biology. Everything pretty much starts here. Okay? Now, what are we talking about? How what has this got to do with siRNA? So we talked about the idea that siRNA was a way to modify gene expression. Now, in other parts of the course, you might have come across time uh, situations or examples of positive gene regulation, i.e. we can, because of certain proteins, like for example, the LAC operon, in the LAC operon you had uh, the repressor protein that when lactose is present, it relieves its uh, repression and allows the mRNA to be produced. So that's um, like an example of a protein that by its action uh, is involved in the negative and positive regulation of the gene at that level. We might also have some other proteins that they bind DNA and they cause, you know, they, they bind the DNA and then they they also recruit RNA polymerase and by recruiting RNA polymerase they are positively uh, influencing how much that gene gets converted or copied into mRNA and then the more mRNA that we have the more chance that it's going to meet a ribosome and the more protein that we're going to make. So those are instances where proteins are involved in regulating mRNA expression and because you've got upregulation of mRNA you get more protein made because there's more mRNAs for the ribosomes to bind to. 
So, an example of such a protein, for example, that you'll be familiar with are the Hox genes, the homeobox genes. So remember, they were DNA binding proteins. They bound the DNA. They could then potentially recruit RNA polymerase and cause the transcription of certain genes into mRNA. SIRNA, and this is just to put it into context, and it's probably not got that much to do with it, but to put it into context, SIRNA is a way that mRNA can be down-regulated. So when, if a cell uh, has needs to down-regulate the amount of protein that it's making, so it's made a lot of protein and now it's enough and it doesn't want it anymore, then it's a way to stop the continued production of that protein. And it might also be a defense mechanism. So for example, uh, if, you, if there's viral um, RNA or genomes, viral genomes in the cell, it might be a way for the, for the cell to act to get rid of those RNA molecules so that the, the viral genes don't get expressed or, 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 the, or the viral mRNA doesn't get used to make viral proteins. So how does siRNA work? Well, the, the, the concept behind siRNA is rather simple. You just got to fill in the gaps that are not in the textbook for yourself and that's that right there. So the concept of siRNA, we'll use a different color, is orange. The concept of siRNA is that siRNA, just like you have RNA that makes ribosomes and just like you have RNA um, genes that code for RNA that makes up ribosomes, genes that code for RNA that makes up the T, T RNAs, the idea is that there's also genes for these siRNAs and when we have too much of a particular gene, these siRNAs get expressed so that they um, cause the destruction of the mRNA molecules and then we don't get the functional protein. But how does that work? So these siRNAs are double-stranded RNA molecules, okay? And what happens is that when they are in cells, there's a protein, there's an enzyme called DISA and it breaks these double-stranded uh, RNA molecules into smaller fragments, okay? So we might get them degraded to a certain level, but then they become rather small, okay? And let's just make a note that the enzyme that converts the double-stranded RNA into the smaller double-stranded RNA is called a dice. So. So, which is an enzyme, okay? So it chops up the original larger double-stranded DNA molecule into a smaller double-stranded uh, RNA molecule, and we have it like this. Now, this then gets further degraded by other protein, proteins in the cell, and we don't need to know their names, but what happens is, that the, the other strand is degraded. So one of, the, one of the two strands of RNA gets degraded and the remaining strand then forms a complex with proteins from the cell. So the remaining strand is there, the other strand is degraded and it's remaining attached to some other proteins in the cell. Okay, now this, the sequence of this small inhibitory RNA molecule, okay, so the sequence of bases in this small inhibitory RNA molecule is complementary to certain mRNAs in the cytoplasm all present in the cell, okay? So it's not gonna cause the destruction of all the mRNAs, but it will find its complementary sequence in certain mRNAs. Now, when it does that, when it does that, 
So it comp so if you have a certain mRNA, if it has a complementary sequence in an mRNA, it will bind to it, bringing along the associated proteins. Okay, and these proteins cause the destruction. They cause the destruction of the mRNA molecule. So I hope we realize the role of the siRNA molecule. The siRNA, is, it, it, the sequence of bases in that molecule are complementary to a certain mRNA molecule. Now, if it is, it binds through complementary base pairing to that mRNA molecule, and it's brought along these other proteins with it that will cause the, you know, the, the, the breakdown of that mRNA molecule. So what happens? is that our mRNA molecule then gets kind of degraded and it can't then associate with a ribosome, it won't get translated and we don't get the functional protein product. Okay, so I hope that we can see that this is a mechanism that can be used by scientists to down-regulate any gene for which they have the sequence. So if you, if you go through the process of sequencing, you, you, you found out, for example, that a certain gene is involved in the development of a certain disorder, and you, you hypothesize that by, re, by getting rid of this protein or by reducing its expression, you might be able to return normal function to a cell, to an organism, then one way that you could go about that is by introducing siRNA into cells and you'd have to have the sequence of the siRNA here complementary to your gene of interest. And if, if you get that right, then you could possibly target that mRNA for destruction so you don't get the protein product that would be in, involved in the development of that disorder. I hope that's making sense. Okay, so it's important therefore that we know the sequence of the gene of interest. Okay, and I guess this is one of the reasons why you have to learn these other techniques together, right? So siRNA only works if you make an RNA that has the right sequence to be complementary to your mRNA of interest. You might only know that because you've isolated your gene because you've digested it using enzymes, because you have sequenced it, yeah? Um, yeah, so following on from that, you can then... So hopefully it's made sense that we have a gene expression method, or uh, mechanism in the cell, right? That gene expression mechanism involves the production of mRNA from genes in the DNA. The transcription produces mRNA, the mRNA then gets translated to produce a functional protein. But we can manipulate gene expression by introducing siRNA. If we want to pick out a particular gene that we, we don't want it to be expressed, we can determine its sequence, insert a complementary uh, siRNA into the cell, that siRNA will bind to the mRNA through complementary base pairing. That will target the mRNA for destruction. The mRNA can no longer be translated, and therefore the gene expression will go down. Okay, so I hope that's made sense. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And good luck.